right guys, in this video you're gonna see us fix this mess. I'm Johnny Valentine with Gain Solar. I'm a solar installer in Northeast Georgia and a licensed electrician. And I uh, really appreciate all you guys watching these videos. Please like and subscribe. And if you're considering installing a solar system, um, please contact me through this channel. I can sell you the inverter, the batteries, and I can talk you through the install. So we've got a old Ur Outback system. And the guy was definitely an electrician, but he wasn't a solar electrician. And these batteries are looking a little puffy. So we're gonna be changing out the sealed lead acid battery bank. This is a UPG battery. Um, shoot, I'll tell you how many amp hours are in it in a second, but we're gonna be, we gotta get this big old cabinet out of here first. Now that we've got the door off of this ancient battery cabinet, now begins the fun. Now there's nothing really wrong with a battery cabinet. This is kind of how you used to have to do it. But there is something wrong with using a battery that's designed for standby applications in a heavy cyclic application or in a cyclic application. In this case, we're in an area where they don't allow you to sell back to the power grid. So in order to save money with a system like this, these radians, you have to use grid zero. And that involves cycling the batteries. It's half inch, isn't it? Nine oh, it's nine sixteenths. So now we gotta take this apart and we may get a couple good batteries out of here. Who knows? But they look a little roasty soddled. Would that be the word? Roasty saddle? In chavo? That's a surefire way to tell your battery's bad, folks. If it's all swole like that. Swole like me. Okay, so some of you guys may be thinking, you know, I guess the guy had to use some blue wire nuts because maybe he, he didn't, I don't know why he used black. So the reason the guy used the blue wire nuts and there's a splice there, so I want to defend this guy a little bit. So originally the pipe came up out of the ground and this solar array was sitting right here, right up against the ground. The holes were... It was right here. And what happened is the homeowner said, hey, you know, the array's too close. I think I need to move it. And so the guy came out and apparently he put in new pipes that were slightly larger. And then he drugged this thing with his truck and concreted it back in. I think he, I think he used totally new pipes in the front, but he said he just drug it forward with his truck. So. Kind of crazy, kind of cowboy. But this is unacceptable. He said that guy was an electrician. And this is how he left him, electrically. And just so you guys know, this is not PV wire running through here. PV wire is outdoor rated. This is blue wire nuts on number six, T-H-H-N. They are not melted though. This is, uh, this is number six THHN copper. So this is big wire, spliced with blue wire nuts. Not cool. All right, so we got the batteries out. And despite the swollenness, some of them are testing, showing some good voltage. So I'll probably use them on the farm for my various chicken fences and little solar gadgetry. We also got this bad boy out. Antonio's gonna build me about 42 chicken coops out of it. And uh, now we're just trying to figure out the classiest way to bring this thing back to life with some lithium. But, but right now it's lunchtime, right Antonio? I don't know if you guys can hear the chickens in the background, but all my jobs have chickens. Pretty much any time I show up to a project and there's chickens, I know I'm gonna get the job. Hear the chickens in the distance. And man, I wish I could show you this house. It's just as cute as can be. As cute as can be. I have to go check out the chicken setup later. So a lot of times it helps to make videos about what you're gonna fix before you fix it. I know I need one and a half inch conduit. Need a one and a half inch bell 90. I'm gonna sweep up in there. I think I'm either gonna put like a 24 inch 10 by 10 gutter, 
I could get like a really wide box to mount there. That would look nice. This pipe is three quarter. I think what I want to do is go go into hard pipe or metal flex right there and go down into a gutter. Cause that's that's big wire. That's that number six right there. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is fix all this garbage. This is number six, DC wire. He's got multiple wire nuts just laying on the ground. The guy came and moved the solar array. So we're gonna put a, a junction box kind of over here somewhere, get it out of the way. And then we're gonna dig back over and pipe it up, try to make chicken soup at a chicken something else so the guy forgot to glue the 90 on that was stepping up out of the ground so we just pulled it right off and you can see the water coming out of the pipe any conduit I've ever found in the ground for any length of time has had water in it so all, all conduits usually are filled with water uh, THHN slash THWN is a wet rated wire you could put it in a gas tank if you wanted so it's totally all right in this application, but um, just keep in mind stuff is going to fill with water as you're burying your pipes, even if you glue them up tight. Just condensation in general. Blue will do it. wire nuts, blue wire nuts, blue wire nuts, blue wire nuts. You gonna twist them till they're tight as can be. And blue wire nuts, blue wire nuts. All right, so we got the <clears throat> pipe fixed. We actually took it loose, ran it up into there, re-glued it, and now we've got another pipe coming to there. Antonio is going to take all this higgity piggity nonsense loose, and then I'm going to be wiring this in. This is a PVC box with IMO 100 amp solar connectors. I think these are cool, the new new connector, but uh, I like it a lot better than what was previously given in the in the like the den rail category of solar pass through terminals these ones are a lot bigger that would be a four string den rail pass through kit from a solar deck and these are there's a lot of these type of, type of terminals there's a bunch of terminals like this that are DC rated, but you can see how much smaller they are. They're a whole lot smaller. And they're also not enclosed. So when you get them on the bus bar and you get them snapped on there, they just don't quite feel like they're gonna be there forever. They, they got a lot of movement to them. And you gotta have a cover. These things, they're just, really feel solid normally I'd be against splicing a wire like this but the customer didn't want to spend all the money on the number six so we would have had to pull it would have been thousand dollars six is really expensive right now and we opted to splice it here's something else the guy could have used this is a burndy unitap I think this is a unitap or a uh, you might hear these called inline splice connectors, insulated terminal blocks. Down here, we kind of refer to them all as Polaris lugs, which are the darker ones, the black ones down in the tray underneath. Um, they make them for all sizes of wire, and, and you know you can just really crank them down tight. But they are aluminum, so you're making if you're making a copper to aluminum splice, you do have a little bit of uh, difference in expansion and contraction coefficients but these things are all over the place like our whole power grid is pretty much held together by these things pretty reliable connector they're expensive but they work and uh once you know that's the burn d but you'll hear a lot of different names for them and they have a lot of different configurations different colors of plastic uh, you can you can get six port 500 mcm polaris lugs if you want This will also hold till the cows come home. This is a uh, really simple 
uh, split bolt, copper split bolt. This is actually one of the best ways to do it. You can see I'm taking the insulation tape off, regular electrical tape off first, and then you get into the rubber tape. All right, and so then I got the rubber tape. You start pulling the rubber tape off. Rubber tape is, uh, I don't want you to film me, I want you to film just this, okay? Yeah. Daddy, um, is it like a trigger right here? The rubber tape makes it waterproof, but you got a copper to copper connection right there. So that, in my mind, is probably better than even the Polaris lug because it's super strong and tight on there. It's waterproof. You can actually put a, a wrench on this and it's copper to copper, so you're not gonna have the expansion and contraction, the different expansion and contraction coefficients that you would on a um, on a uh, aluminum to copper connection. And you can get these at Home Depot. You don't have to go to a specialty store. So the split bolt works. All right, so we got these guys straightened out. Put a junction box right there. And it is what it is, but it looks a whole lot better than uh, the way it did look. Uh, it'd be pretty obvious now so it's not something that is gonna the homeowner didn't want a uh, hand hole he wanted to be able to ride around and through here with his mower and stuff so this is what he wanted so this is what he got and then here we have our all our solar coming down i was able to reuse those pieces of flex i just kept that the way it was but uh we we made this look a whole lot better than what it was which was not hard because it looked really bad and it was kind of dangerous so i still got to come back and do something with these other two combiner boxes this is kind of the old school way of doing battery backup where you do combiner boxes and low voltage lower voltage charge controllers um, so he's paralleling three panel strings in these charge controllers and then heading back to his FlexMax uh, charge controllers, which can take about 100. I did want to show you guys this. This is no, a I don't think this guy was a bad guy. Midnight this transition box. Kind of cool. You know, really solid way to do a transition. This needs to be this is, uh, as well. Just a midnight box, but then it's got a bunch of little bus, little terminals, bus bar terminals mounted in it. And uh, you don't see these a lot, but I keep them in my truck. And that just matches really well. So I decided to use that there because he has the output from those two combiners. He had it come in and just cut right there. So we had to do some kind of a splice. So we went with that. Looks good. So we got it redone. And uh, we're operating this system in mini grid. It does have a whole house generator. So the way the mini grid works is as long as uh, I've got the charger turned off and as long as there is power, the battery is above a certain voltage, which is I've got it set to 51.6, it will use solar power. Uh, if the battery goes below 51.6, it'll start using grid power, but um, the, it will not charge the batteries from grid power unless he turns the charger on, which to turn the charger on, you press the charger button, charger mode, and you would hit on, and that would turn the charger on. So if the power goes out <clears throat> and he wants to run his whole house generator, and he wants to charge batteries up with his whole house generator, you would hit the charger button, charger mode, and hit on. But that's uh, the best way for this guy to save money with a dual radian and uh, when you're not selling back.